All right, guys. Sorry for the background noise of my printer. Printing something else up. So, we got the uh, Protocycler in today, and I wanted to do a quick unboxing. Sorry, I am definitely not a videographer, so uh, this is going to suck. But at least y'all can see that they exist, and we can start testing it out. So, first, we have the Protocycler in all of its glory. A little bit weird there with that, but got the case, got the grinders everything else all right once i pull it out i'll start the video again so first down in the little uh crevices we'll call them just like tucked down in there and all that were all of the uh pull outs tools that kind of thing so you got the pliers and uh wrench and then coloring additives um usb um then the uh oh, what do you call it the crank and everything for the grinder um, obviously power and then your pellets come like this um, be wary uh, most of us you know are used to having uh, um, like a printer room and everything but there are loose pellets so uh, when you're starting to open um, your box and everything they'll start scattering everywhere so be careful of that so finally got out of the box and the bottom of the box was um, the instructions Along with actually the real handle, so I haven't quite figured out what that is, but I'll find out quick enough. And our beautiful protocycler. Everything looks in order, nothing broken. Beautiful hooks. A little finicky, but works. Opens it up. Very beautiful indeed. All right, as you can see, I have been able to successfully put it together and power it on. As you can see, got the crank in, got the spool on. You always wanna make sure this part faces out. I made the mistake of doing this. And that part goes there, so it's easy to plug in there. So, the other mistake I made, I've actually already pre-ground up some stuff. There's two magnets or something or another that um, do the locking mechanism for it. One is there. The other is obviously the uh, bottom tray. Um, the big issue with it is you'll be playing with it and trying to get it to work. I didn't have it powered on or plugged in or powered on. I found that it would not turn to grind it until I actually had the power on on the system. Um, some really smart engineer can actually tell me how that part works, but I didn't quite uh, know that kind of issue existed. So we'll grab some chunks to throw in there. Pink ones will do a little bit better. Let's see if we can rip this up. Just some of the uh, supports I did for some other stuff. And as you can see, oops, got that done. Put the box in. You can't really hear it, but there actually was a uh, part of it that started uh, um, the lock in mechanism. And then I will start grinding. Yeah. <laughs>
don't think that little piece is gonna go. Come on! Squish! Alright. Let's see what we got. Come down here to the tray. There we go. Pull it up. We did pretty good job. All things considered. Some of it might need a redo. And careful, I'm already making dustiness. Ugh. All over. All right, next step, get the preheating done and get the scale to even this out and do a 50-50 mix. I'll be back. All right, even for just this much is about 150 grams. It took me a good five cranks, like going through and cycling a couple times through. It took about 20 minutes. I know I'm a little slow and lazy. Um, but yeah, it's still pretty tough work to get that. Measured out my um, raw, so it's a 50-50 mix. Gonna take the time to mix these up. I know, very, very scientific. Well, not really. Uh, I just took the best thing I could figure out. If you want to get something like a tin or something else to put underneath the uh, um, box when you're doing the sifting, because it gets everywhere. Um, I'll have a couple pictures in there to kind of show you how I actually jammed um, the bottom box to where it doesn't want to click in and out as it should. Um, and that's mainly just because uh, um, of getting uh, plastics jammed in that bottom area um, and them not being able to hold together very well. All right, well, once I get this, I think we're ready to start pouring in. I will probably actually I shouldn't probably say it on the this video about removing the grid. It also does help for any of these stringier ones and not being careful on that. I could definitely see since this is only 200 grams, I'm already over halfway full down there. Um, to be able to do a kilo in one go, um, it's going to be, uh, what do you call it, uh, building a hopper on top. So, you can already see that I'm almost three-fourths full. Um, so it's definitely not going to hold enough to do a kilogram um, in one go. It's kind of a, I guess, a guess in monitoring. Um, aspect of it. Alright, more to come once I get this going. Alright, so what I've done is gone into settings, which, there we go. I select extrude uh, uh, PLA and it's at 175. Once I did that it's now heating up getting itself going move it and lighten up kind of a slow heat up I'm already at like 30 seconds got kind of spoiled with my uh, Swiss and uh, upgraded uh, CR10 I'm guessing all right, well, I'll be back when it's up to date. So now I'm um, getting the uh, filament pulled out. I'm getting ready to set it. And now it should be pulling 0.75, it looks like three. We'll see what happens here as we get going. Because it said it has to calibrate itself once you get it through. Ooh. 
so the push it through. Sorry. Part of that. Got ourselves a little problem here with that being way too thick. I want to note this because I kind of did it. I had not attached the spool part correctly where they do the measurements. That's how it made this go crazy wonky and ended up with a whole big mess. And here, got that corrected. And so we're going to start up here in just a second. Alright. So I got it extruding. Is now doing its measurements to get it to the correct length coming through there oh it looks like we got our diameter in place and so it starts spooling comes up and it starts spooling around here so those bottom wires are absolute garbage so that'll be uh, interesting to see how that works but i didn't quite know how to do the stabilizing other than attaching it so there it goes. Comes back down through there. The light and the measuring does that through there. Hopefully the color starts coming through. So far it's just coming out all clear or murky white or milky white. And you know it's pinks, blacks, white. Um, so I wouldn't expect it to be so clear. Um, I'll update you in a little bit. Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick, uh, I guess, first review, first look at the uh, Protocycler. A um, little bit about me so you kind of get uh, what you're getting here is I'm not very technical savvy. I'm more on the sales roles, don't have engineering skills, don't have tinkering. So a lot of stuff in this you probably can figure out better than I did, probably much better than I did. Um, but I wanted to give it from a very um, average person's point of view when doing it. Um, as you saw in the uh, unboxing and everything, um, I just strictly did the automatic settings on it um, and did no tinkering, no setting changes, nothing like that to begin with. So first, what I really did like about the uh, Protocycler was it was very easy to set up. I mean, like I said, plain, average person, um, even had to have help uh, putting together the CR-10 a little bit. Um, this was easy for me. Um, follow the pictures, follow their pretty basic uh, quick starts. Um, biggest thing would be uh, making sure you're following pictures. I um, turned two things upside down, um, but it was easy that it didn't plug in correctly so I just flipped it um, so easy fix there um, it's with it you know once you have the color filament going uh, when you have clear filament going right at first and that's probably going to be for everybody it's just because they did their testing um, it's all over the chart um, you can't use the filament um, but once it gets going it stays within about 0.1 um, I'd like it to be you know 0.5 and I figure with a little bit of tinkering and homing uh, honing, I can get it there, but right now it's going, you know, up to uh, um, 1.85 and down to 1.65, um, but averaging about 1.75. Um, the grinder itself is not terribly uh, hard to do. Like even when you when I put like really big hard chunks in it, um, it wasn't hard or tough or anything like that to uh, crank it around. So, you know, even the weakest of people could do it just fine. 
without having any issues there. Um, basically, you know, they came through, did what they said they were going to do, created a uh, new uh, filaments uh, grinder and, you know, reuser, so that worked out well. Um, also, one thing I really did like is they added little lights um, inside the uh, um, extruder area. Um, they probably did it for their uh, uh, measurement system that they're using. Um, but it makes it easy for looking in, looking at it, setting up your cameras, web cameras, and the lighting, everything you need to do is already there. Um, random observations uh, when doing it. So it is uh, very messy when you're pulling out the uh, grinding pan, kind of sifting it, how you're supposed to do it, and putting it back together. You're getting stuff all over the place. Um, it gets pretty bad. So I ended up getting just a bake pan and putting it underneath it and doing it that way um, to kind of reduce the mess. But there's still filament um, actually falling out after you pulled out the pan that then gets in there and gets the... Uh, grinder thing jammed up a little bit um, and then you know leads to that mess. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, so uh, like I kinda said there you know make sure that you're looking at the pictures the quick start um, guide is you know there but it's not so you know if you're not looking at the pictures you're gonna probably mess up something it's not hard to fix. Um, all in all, it took me like 20 minutes to build it, and that was me messing up um, with that. Um, the other random spot, and I actually put this in the dislike um, part of it, but um, the spool itself, you got to know the measurements on the spool, and you have to do that in pre-settings before you do automatic. What I did is I went straight into turning it on, clicking automatic, and go. And my spool was smaller than the automatic settings, so I had to sit there and babysit it and push the filament back onto the spool when it got to the uh, far right edge. Um, you can easily fix that part, but doing the first set, I didn't know that, um, um, that kind of thing. So kind of talking a little bit about the bad things, uh, the fan is very loud in the system. Um, it, I was, I'm overly uh, impressed about actually how loud it is. It's uh, louder than any of my printers or anything like that. Um, the rest of my major complaints um, kind of go towards the grinder itself. Um, when you're putting stuff through the grinder, you usually have to re-grind it about two, three, four times before it's actually grind up in enough uh, smallest flakes to actually stick through the uh, other mesh for the extrusion part. Um, the grinder pan itself that you're pulling in and out, you know, it, it needs to be, uh, it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear, especially when you're pulling the pan from inside of it, you know, panning it out to uh, sift through it and all that and put it back together. It's actually pretty flimsy. Um, I've actually already broken mine a little bit. Um, you, it was pretty easy to start, you know, getting it back together and um, got tape around it and all that to fix it. But it's still something that, you know, it's my first time really putting it together, really using it, and I've already broken it. Um, so, for something that's going to take a whole lot of wear and tear, that's not a good part of it. Um, so, the other big part is, you know, kind of, because I didn't know about the filament spools, it kept kicking itself off. And so it was a lot of babysitting. Um, and even while I was writing notes for uh, doing this video, it had a catastrophic failure. Um, which made me have to turn it off and then clean out everything and then start a brand new spool over. The second spool is going a whole lot better because I measured the sizes and put a bigger spool on there. Um, but kind of, you know, that, that being a big issue between either the spool or um, it's going through a small um, thing where it measures it and all that. If that falls off the track, which happened on me during that catastrophic failure, it just it messes up completely. It's not pushing out the um, to the spool. It's not doing everything, so it's going to clog on one side of it and actually clog right at the extruder. Um, and I held a whole lot of mess. I'll have pictures of that and what it looked like later. Um, so overall, you know, it's a lot better than what I've had experiences with with the uh, fill extruder and Villabot. But it's still that constant babysitting to where you know you have to walk in there every 15, 30 minutes. Um, to make sure nothing's gone crazy and you have to start over. Um, so that's my thoughts and uh, 
I hope that's helpful for everyone. Thanks.